Hello, and welcome to Game 8 of the Man of Steel Tournament, otherwise known as The Fight for Second. <laughs> Kells, you have it locked up. There's no secret there. Yeah, oh, I'm, I'm kind of ready to be a two-time, two-time, two-time Masters champion. Mm. <laughs> well, uh, major champion. Major. Yeah. You're already, you're already, the, you're already projecting forward to the Brain Masters tournament next year. Just reliving past glories. Awfully confident. <laughs> Andy, how you doing? I'm doing good. Neil, <laughs> I was, I kept, I was expecting Andy to say more because he usually does. <laughs> Left short. This is focus. This is what we're talking about right now. I'm hyper focused. This, this is, is a focus. scary. Okay. Scary one. What's the difference between you two, like point wise? Uh, they are tied. Oh. <laughs> so this does. Yeah, so, so the the, the <laughs> way the tournament works is each first place win gives three points, second place two, and third place gets one point. And as the standings are today, before our final show, Kells has sixteen points. Davo and Andy both have thirteen. Sensei, is there a possibility for extra credit in this? <laughs> there are a few bonus points thrown in here and there. So is that what counts? Does that count? I, I was thinking extra credit in like the end points. Like maybe if I did super good, I could get four points. Mm, no. Okay. <laughs> you would need five or then it would be a tie. <laughs> like if I learn math. That would be good extra credit. So... So the way the game works is every week we have a theme and in that theme, there are six categories of four questions. Each, each question is worth 10 points with a few bonus points thrown in here and there. And because this is the man of steel tournament, each, each game, each player is allowed to steal one other person's answer. So if you're not confident and you think someone else is confident, you can steal their, steal their answer, which usually works out, but occasionally, I think once or twice someone stole an answer that was wrong. I think this game I'm going to go for a strict monotone when I lock in so that I don't tip Andy to anything. <laughs> <laughs> and, and maybe and maybe pause, if you even if you're confident, just think about it yeah. for a little bit. Give a good 10-second pause before each lock-in. <laughs> I'm only going to give right answers for this episode. That's a bold statement. I think oh. that's where I've been I've been Thank analyzing you. my game. I've been going back and looking at the films and it seems like I, I give a lot of stupid answers. <laughs> um a lot of ridiculously wrong answers when for each of these there is a right answer. Yeah. So I'm going to go for the right answer. Be a nice that's twist. Focused. <laughs> No, 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 no. All right. Well, today's theme. Are you ready for today's theme? Yes. It's clothes. Clothes. Yeah, I was thinking we're all currently uh, working from home in one capacity or another. And kind of one of the jokes is when you're working at home, you don't have to. You, I mean, you can walk, go around all day in your pajamas, right? So anyway, that got me thinking about clothes. All right. And uh, I'm, we're just going to assume that everybody's wearing clothes today. Oh, uh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So first category is science. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Question one. Ultramarine is a deep blue pigment used to dye cloth. It was originally made by turning what mineral into a powder? Oh, I know this. Okay, I got it. I'm locked in. You said, you said ultramarine? Yeah. Um, as being colorblind, I presume I do not have to answer this question. I'll just get the points. Well, <laughs> I mean, that's not really the way it works. Wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes, I am colorblindest. Oh, that's right. Okay. Okay, I just have to think of that. The right answer. <laughs> uh, I'm locked in. A mineral used to make blue. What is a mineral? <laughs> <laughs> it's 
Andy, it's... I'll give you a hint. A mineral is like sort of like a rock. Ah, locked in. I got this. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I'm hoping this is a mineral. You said ultramarine, and the first thing that came to my mind was aquamarine. So I want aquamarine. Deva? I said cadmium. Mm. And Andy? Crunch berries. <laughs> well, they're like a rock, they're full of minerals. They're blue. Just give me the points. <laughs> if uh, yeah, anybody, anybody who's played much Minecraft might have a head, uh, a head start on this one. The correct answer is lapis lazuli. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yep. It's a blue. What? Seriously? You know what? Uh-huh. Oh I've God. been here before. You guys, are, you guys aren't starting off strong. Want to flip for it, Davo? Yeah. yeah. Everybody fell out of the blocks. Come on, come on. It can only get easier, right? <laughs> no. <Yeah. laughs> All right, question two. In the mid-1930s, DuPont developed what synthetic polymer, which has been used in many types of cloth and is softer than polyester? Softer than polyester. Okay, I got it. I'm going to try it. Nothing softer than I'm locked in. I think it's softer than polyester. Oh, yeah, I got it. Soft. I am fairly certain of this. I am so certain. I'm going to open another white claw. <laughs> <laughs> That's most in the confidence. Devo, I strongly urge you to keep drinking. You got it, buddy. <laughs> All right. Kel, did you lock in? Are you still thinking? Uh, yeah, no, I'm locked in. All right, Devo, what's your answer? Rayon. Andy? Nylon. Son of a... Kels. <laughs> I, I said chiffon. The correct answer is nylon. Oh. And look who's Boom. on the board. I just want, I just want to take a brief uh, moment here to read out the scores. Currently, David and Kels have zero. Andy has 10 points. Boom, yeah. Why don't we just wrap it up now? Thanks, everybody. It was a great episode. <laughs> so long, three. little brainers. Now we're, we're going to continue. Okay. <laughs> I just wanted to give you a little confidence boost there, Andy. I, I feel confident. Question three. Perchloroethylene is a chemical used in what process? I am locked in. I am locked in. I think I have the answer. I know what some of that means, but <laughs> I'm locked in. Okay. Andy? I think it's the dyeing process. Kels? I said bleaching. Devo? I said dry cleaning. In the industry, it's uh, referred to as just perk, and it is used in dry cleaning. Perk. Oh, look at nice. Pitching a shot out over here. One of the common myths about dry cleaning is that the clothes don't get uh, wet. It's they don't use water; they do use liquid chemicals to to clean the clothes. I worked in a dry cleaner as, as a young man. So. I was about to I was, I was about to ask you: Did you work? Did you I work did. with George Jefferson? So. For for about a year, I worked in a dry cleaner. So when I was a teenager, oh, did you come into contact? It's that's good. <laughs> I was I worked at the counter, but I did see the big machines and all the big Vatso chemicals they had to use. Um, just wanted to a lot of, a lot of technical terms here. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm paying dry clean. You're kind of kind of losing me a little bit. <laughs> all right, question four: A raincoat made of rubberized fabric was invented in 1824 by what Scottish inventor? What? Scottish inventor of the raincoat. <laughs> I'm locked in. I know what Dave was locked in with. <laughs> you know nothing. You know I do. Nothing. I do. I think I can think of one one Scottish inventor. Well, maybe two. Um, I'm locked in. I know, I I know him. I know this when you say it. Not everybody's locked in. I'll say that. I know that 
it's still used to reference raincoats, but I can't come up with what I'm thinking. I'm like on the edge of it, and I just can't come up with it. So I'm locked in. What's your answer, Kels? It's Alexander Fleming. <laughs> Deva? So I know in in Britain, they call rain boots, they call galoshes wellies because they're Wellington boots. So expanding that, I figured he might have invented the raincoat and rain boots and went with Wellington. That's interesting logic, Andy. That Sean Connery. Well. It doesn't go <laughs> well at all. <laughs> uh, have you ever heard a raincoat referred to as a Macintosh? Yes, that's what I was trying to come up with. <laughs> I have ah! not. Ah, well... It was a Macintosh. It was Mr. Macintosh. I actually didn't write down his first name. I, oh, I knew it. that. I knew that. I had. Oh. I'm on to your game, Trebek. Good news, guys. The science category is over. Oh, oh my wow. goodness. The uh, the scores are zero for Kells and ten for Devo and Andy. I'm running away with it, Jim. This is, but we're <laughs> still all we're still all tied up after one category, Devo. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Thunderdome, man. <All> right. <laughs> Category two is history. Oh, shit. And this is, a, this is a true or false question. Okay. I hate your true and false questions. <laughs> it should be 50-50, but it never is. <laughs> I don't know how you do that. It's some sort of true and false <laughs> wizardry. <laughs> Question one, true or false, the first ancient Olympians competed naked. Oh, man. See, come on. That's what I hate. <laughs> I'm locked in. I'm locked in, too. I'm locked in. Deva? See, the, the apocryphal thing is they did compete naked, but I said false because you're Neil and you're Trixie, and I don't trust you. <laughs> so I went with false. <laughs> okay. Andy, I swear on my mother's grave that is exactly the logic I used. That I have heard they repeated they they competed naked. You're asking the question, so it's got to be false. Kels, I wanted to say false because I felt like I heard that too, but I just went ahead and said true. All right. Well. It is true that ancient Olympians competed naked, but not until the 15th Olympic Games. Before that, they all wore uh, sort of a loincloth. Yay. And the, the story is, so, so the correct answer is false. The, the story is that one, one guy was running and his loincloth fell off, but mm -hmm. he continued to, to run. And for some reason, everybody watching thought, now there, that is the the definition of a pure athlete. So from then on, they competed naked for the next like 800 years until the Christians made them stop. I'm going to put every joke I had in my brain away and let's just move on to the next question. Yep. <laughs> Can I just point out though, Devo and I got this question correct because Sensei has taught us not to trust. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's, the, that's, that's how we got this one right. Don't and trust. Believe me, that's been noted. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Son of a... Uh, question two. Hugh Hefner. Why, why did I write Hugh Hefner? Oh, my God. <laughs> Is it not Hugh Hefner? <laughs> what what is, is going on? on? <laughs> I'm really interested to see who you meant. <laughs> No, well, I mean, you, you you might understand when I when I correct it here. You have I meant to say Nelson Rockefeller, <laughs> Howard Hughes. Yeah, I'm going with Howard Hughes. I meant to say Howard Hughes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, question two: Howard Hughes designed a cantilevered bra for the busty star of his movie The Outlaw, released in 1946. Who was that star who later went on to star in Gentlemen Prefer Blondes? It's not her. It's not her. No, it's not her. So who was her co-equal in that movie is the question. Oh, I remember now for another I, reason. 
I don't remember her name. I remember her, I think I remember her first name. That doesn't help me at all. <laughs> I'll just write down what I remember and I know it's wrong, but I know her first name is those. Um given what those fellas are putting out, I'm going to cancel that one and go with the other one. Yeah, hey, you're yeah, you remember. I am <laughs> Going to lock in. All right. Andy? Gene Russell. Kels? And Kels is on the board. If Andy is right, I said Jane Russell. And Devo. I couldn't remember Jane Russell's last name, so I put Jane Mansfield because she could have used a cantered levered bra. That, <laughs> that is a good valid. You were correct in that it was Jane. The correct answer is Jane Russell. Yay. By the way, um, Jane Russell said that Hugh Hefner uh, was probably great at en- engineering planes, but not so much at engineering bras. She didn't actually wear it. She substituted her own bra and kind of stuffed it a little bit and made it work <laughs> the way he was supposed to. Now, I just want to point out that you said Hugh Hefner again. Did I? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kind of Freudian thing going on. I didn't actually change it when I wrote it down, so I was kind of looking at it. Anyway, <laughs> well, that's fine. So you can just that whole thing. Oh, it's going to stay in. <laughs> Let's just throw away that question. Right there, there. <laughs> Question three. What inventor created a loom which used punch cards to program designs in woven fabric? Oh, 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 I forget oh, oh, the oh, year, oh. but I think it was the 1700s. Well, that goes right out the I window. bring him up in the first <laughs> industrial revolution. You ought to. Give me a second. I cannot come up. I know well, he's present. I think I'm, I'm looking at uh, last place in this friggin' tournament. <laughs> they both still early. We got science and history first. We can only go up from here. There better be some sports, by God. I'm locked in. Andy, where did you say he was from? Did you say France? Not. Oh, did I say that out loud? He did. Not <laughs> Spain. He was from Spain. Yeah, France. They come from France. He came yeah. from France. <laughs> I'm locked in. I'm locked in. Kels? Uh, well, since Andy gave me the French, uh, the French hint, I went with Louis de la Fruit, who, of course, invented fruit of the looms. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I went with my favorite sciencey dude, Tycho Brahe. <laughs> Andy? I swear the only Frenchman I can come up with right now for whatever reason is Pepe Le Pew. So I I'm not even real French. <laughs> he was French. <laughs> the cartoon skunk. I mean you, you couldn't even think of De Gaulle. Or oh, De Gaulle. Pepe Le Pew. Or Pepe Le Pew. Oh, Pepe I... would be ridiculous. Pepe All... Le Pew makes much more sense. <laughs> Okay, so well, you know when you get Andy's Tycho Brahe is, stuck in your brain. Andy's <laughs> answer is Le Pew. Yep. <laughs> I'm right about the French, though, aren't I? That's the. Well, I don't know why I can't. Come yeah, up with the you name. are. He was French, and his name was Jacquard. Yes, the Jacquard loom. Yes, that's what it is. I learned about him in computer science class because the the punch. He was basically using punch cards to program a machine, which became kind of. That, that process kind of carried forward into punch cards and computers. That's cool. I can remember my dad using a punch card computer uh, when he worked for the railroad uh, in his office. We would go there and, and there was this giant punch card computer that would keep track of what cars were on what trains. I'm frustrated. I had a, I went and toured his office once and they gave me a stack of the punch cards that I could take home and the the stack represented one train. And I think I used them for scrap paper or something as a little kid. I'd love to have that stack of punch cards today. Mm -hmm. If I come across any, I'll send them your way. 
<laughs> I got to say, I'm enjoying this game so far. I'm glad you are. I'm, yeah. I'm happy. You and like two listeners. <laughs> Every other listener is already like, oh, it's one of these episodes. I'm going to find something else. That's going to get better. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> starting starting with this category. Starting with this, this next question, I mean. Question four. What company founded in 1818 made the suit that Abraham Lincoln was wearing when he was assassinated? <laughs> what the? What? This was in GQ last month, so. <laughs> what? I'm locked in. That's that's my hint. It probably was. <laughs> I'm locked in. Andy, just write Armani and be done with it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think of an old school American suit company that would be around or famous. It'd still be an answer to this question. If you, if you want it, if you want to, if you want to take back your. Well, I, <laughs> hang on. I'm just saying. I'll I'll offer an easy mode if anybody wants it. If you want I think I I think I have a solid guess. I'm just trying to decide if they're. I think they're old enough. I'm locked in. Deva, Brooks Brothers. Andy, that's what I went with. Brooks Brothers, and Kels. of Massachusetts, right? I, don't know. I, I, I went with Brooks Brothers as well. See, it wasn't that hard, guys. Hey, correct <laughs> answer: Brooks Brothers. That was the only old suit. Yeah. <laughs> So he did have a couple of Armani's. He liked the Italian suits. <laughs> I think the hat was Armani. I was kind of going to do something about the the um, the fact that Brooks Brothers also made slave clothing. Yikes! So there's yeah, yeah, you know, out of scraps and stuff. I didn't know that was even manufactured. I just presumed that was something that was. They had loose materials. Yeah, and made. clothing buying buying clothing really didn't become a thing until the second industrial revolution. You had to be wealthy to buy buy clothes. That's why when when you see these portraits, particularly a royalty, they're wearing a ridiculous amount of clothes. It's it's them. That's them with bling. That's them showing off. Nonetheless, they 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 did make uh, clothing for slaves. Huh. I never knew. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to add that to a. A lesson. I did not know like slaves, like they had clothes they bought for them. And I don't know if they just give them to, if they just give them away, but pretty much every president since 1818 has worn Brooks Brothers or has had at least one Brooks, Brooks Brothers suit. Really? The last suit you'll ever wear. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm just quoting Men in Black. I What? <laughs> All right, at the end of round two, Kells has 20, Davo 30, Andy 40. Oh, it's tightening up. It's anybody's game. Let's move on to music. Yes. Crap on a cracker. (laughs) Why would you have that? (laughs) Question one. The song Underneath Your Clothes was a hit in 2002 for what South American singer? What? I'm locked Locked in. in. Underneath your clothes, two thousand two South South American or South African? South either either one. (laughs) I didn't hear because somebody was being clever. South American. South American. God, uh, I am drawn. Is that no? Yeah. I am stealing. (laughs) Kells' answer. Wow. That's bold. bold of you. I got not... nothing. All right. Kells, what's your answer? I guess Shakira. I was thinking Shakira. Is it off the Empire album? I, I don't know. <laughs> I just <laughs> guessed. Oh, I literally guessed Shakira. I almost wrote. Uh, that would have been. Uh, that's what the last thing I said was it no. And that's what I was thinking of. Okay. <laughs> what the hell is going on with you, Andy? <laughs> The pressure is buckling in right It has. I think you're Hey, Deva, what's your answer? My answer is Shakira. Yeah. She's pretty much the only South American singer I could think of, too. Exactly. Yeah. That's the correct answer. I wasted a steal. I should have just gone with Shakira. I am. This is how it ends for me. Does anybody else smell brownies? 
Is that just me? <laughs> I think given the opportunity, uh, Andy, you should always go with Shakira. <laughs> Every single time. <laughs> yeah. Question two. Jermaine Stewart had a hit in 1986 with what song? Oh. Oh, yeah. Locked in. I, I locked in, too. Locked in. Kels? I'm still in Andy's answer. <laughs> <laughs> Devo? We don't have to take our clothes off. Yes, I could not think of the name of this. So. Andy? We don't have to take our clothes off. And Kels gets it. Because it is, we don't have to take our clothes off. It just just out of curiosity, if I'd said who had a hit nineteen eighty six with "We Don't Have to Take Our Clothes Off," would you have gotten it? I don't think so. Negative yeah. on that, Ghost Rider. The name clicked <laughs> with me for some reason. I went I went back and forth on that a few times. Question three: Who was the artist who originally recorded "Blue Suede Shoes" in nineteen fifty five? Locked in. I can't. Mm. I'm locked in. I'm locked in. David? Stealing Andy's answer. <laughs> Andy? It's Carl Perkins, of course. Elvis made it big, but Carl Perkins did it first. And Kels? Ah, mm. uh, yes, Chuck Berry. Correct answer is Carl Perkins. Question four. Who scored their second top 40 hit with Poppin' My Collar in 2006? <laughs> I'm locked in. Kel's got it. Pop in my car. Okay. And I've already wasted my steel. Well, you ain't wasted. I'm going to punt. Oh, right guy. I'm going to punt too. I'm going to punt right back at Devo. Oh, wow. Same time. Double punt. Double punt. Double punt. Before Kel's gives his answer, I want to say that I started with the artist and tried to find if they had any hit songs that involved clothing. <laughs> Because, Kells, what's the answer? Ever since I can remember, I popped my collar. It would be 3 6 Mafia with, showing up again on the show. With GTJ. <laughs> That's fantastic. Wow. Nice. Should have guessed Juicy J. This point. I would have given you I would have given you partial credit for Juicy yeah. J. Which means it's the last time I'm ever gonna use Juicy J in the question. <laughs> <laughs> All right, at the end of round three, well, everybody scored 30 points, so we're up to 50 for Kel, 60 for Devo, and 70 for Andy. Okay. All right. So we're going to do movies next, and I'm doing something a little bit a little bit weird on this one. So Are you going to act with... out scenes? Yeah. Because <laughs> that well, would I'm be gonna weird. Do I'm going to be I'm going to do pantomime. Ooh. Oh, that would be Too a challenge. Much. No, so I'm going to describe an iconic outfit from a movie mm -hmm. or from a movie poster. I'll tell okay. you which one is, I'll tell you which one is the movie poster because that's what I used to write the question. And then my wife told me that wasn't in the movie. So, uh -huh. but it's still, it's still pretty iconic, I think. Okay. All right. So we'll start with an easy one, an orange bikini with a white knife belt. Locked in. Oh, by the way, e each one of these has an easy mode where I'll tell you the actor or actress. Orange bikini with the said a white knife belt. A white knife belt, yeah. Oh, um and I'm looking for the movie. Oh I okay. I have I'm gonna put something in parentheses as well, but I'm locked in. I'm locked in. Okay. Devo, I feel like I feel like you're very discouraged right now. <laughs> I am because I know what you're talking about. It was, it was Ursula and dress, right? And dress, not Anders. Yeah, it's Andres. Yeah, yeah. It was, except, and it, except it wasn't. Or it was Halle Berry in another Bond movie that I can't remember the name of, and I just put down Goldfinger because it popped into my head. Goldfinger. Kels. Well, the movie that Dave was referring to is Doctor No. Mm-hmm. And Halle Berry did wear this in Die Another Day. So that's your answer? Yes. And Andy? It's Die Another Day with uh, Halle Berry. And to be fair to Devo, it was definitely 
a nod to Dr. No, for sure. Yeah, it was, it was you, you were supposed to think Dr. No when you saw that yeah. scene. Yeah. Okay. But nobody wore that outfit in Dr. No, did they? No, nobody did. It, I don't think, it was, I think hers was yellow. I was going to yeah. say hers was white. No. And I don't think she had a knife belt either. I mean, she was she was collecting Very shells. Light. Yeah, she had a. It was a belt. A belt. On, I don't think it was a knife belt though. Okay, it was light and colored. Interesting how detailed our memories are of these two bikinis. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, I'm gonna look it up just to make sure. It was white. White. Okay. Do I get another bonus point, Sensei, for the only one saying it was a white bikini? And no, she did I'm... have a knife belt. Oh, yeah. So then belts, you take it away. It he give it and he <laughs> take it away. No, my, my reason for looking it up is whether or not I should give um, Devo partial credit. But then he didn't get the movie either way. No, I was totally wrong every way okay. possible. All right. Well, I was trying. Excellent answer. So. Question two A Rancho Carne cheerleading outfit rancho carne high what damn again there's there's an easy mode for half points i'll tell you the actress i'll take the easy mode i need to get on the board yeah i don't have it so give me give me yeah i'll take the easy mode okay kels you locked in though i'm locked in um before you give them the easy mode can you tell me the color of the uniform no well, it's not for me. I, I was going to give them the actress. I, I mean, I, I'll have to look it up. I think it was red. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty sure I got it. Is the actress Kirsten Dunst? Yes. Okay. Yep. Oh. Yes. Yeah, so, oh. so the easy mode The easy mode is uh, Kirsten Dunst was the actress. Actually, several people wore it, but she was. Locked yeah, in. lots of people. Locked, locked in. All right, Devo. Bring it on. Kels. Bring it on. And Andy. Bring it on, to which I have not seen the film, but I've seen the musical. The musical was really good. Hmm. I didn't know it was a musical. I enjoyed the movie. Yep. Hmm. All right. So this is the one where the the description of the outfit is on the movie poster, but um, a sort of similar but but different was in the movie. Okay. A black cutout mini dress, a pink crop top, thigh high patent leather boots. Locked in. What? <laughs> wow. Can you, can you describe this outfit again? You said black it's cutout. A, it's a black dress. cutout mini dress, which means that it's a mini dress with uh, parts of it cut out. Okay. A pink crop top and thigh high patent leather boots. I'm locked in. locked in. Andy? You're describing what Brian Piccolo's wearing on the <laughs> poster. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Brian's oh, I knew as soon as Kel started laughing, I couldn't keep it serious anymore. No one wants to see that. Brian Piccolo was a weird guy, but he was a friend of mine. He was a friend of mine. <laughs> You know, I think if you'd got if you'd asked for the easy mode, you probably would have gotten it right. Yeah, because I, I didn't know we had an option. For I said that. Oh, oh, I missed oh, it's that. Not. That's all right. I don't I, think all, all, right. all of these have an easy mode. Deva, Pre- uh, pretty woman. Kels. Oh, pretty woman. yeah. Yep. The correct answer is pretty woman. Yep. There it is. I, you know, I've yet to see that movie. I've seen maybe like the first 20, 25 minutes. It's a pretty good movie. It's entertaining. Okay. I, I haven't seen it since it came out. I don't know how well it's aged. It's a Disney movie about prostitutes, right? <laughs> More or less. Yeah. Kind yeah. of. In a way, yeah. Kind of. <laughs> All right. Question four. Red windbreaker, white t-shirt, and blue jeans. Locked in. Oh, Devo. I don't know how you visualize this so easy. Red Red windbreaker, white t-shirt. white t-shirt, blue jeans. This is all in the same person? Yeah, at the same <laughs> time, even. 
Uh, windbreaker. I'm gonna take the easy mode because um, I was thinking something else, and that is is it's got my mind kind of clogged up right now. I run lock. I know. No, well, <laughs> um, I have a, I have a, no, I, I need the easy mode. The easy mode is the actor was James Dean. That's a windbreaker? Mm, I'm locked in. I'm locked in. All right. Kels? Rebel without a cause. Andy? Rebel without a cause. And Devo? Rebel without a cause. And Devo, you got it without the easy mode. The other two used it, right? Yeah, you got four. Yeah. Um, so I saw it described as a uh, as a leather jacket, but it's definitely not a leather jacket. It's it's a, a light fabric. I think it is actually made in. I think it's actually made in nylon. Okay. Yeah, I guess I always imagined it as as a leather jacket. So yeah. that would have never come to me in a million years. I was thinking Fight Club. Because I think the the uh, the imaginary uh, character wore a red coat, didn't he? He Tired did, but he had a, he had a colorful like shirt on. Yeah, and coat. that's why that's why I stumbled. Like I think he had almost like a Hawaiian shirts and underneath. You, and you say red windbreaker. The first thing I thought of was Royal Tenenbaums. Oh yeah. First thing I thought of was like, oh yeah, that's easy. And I was like, could he could he possibly be talking about breaking? But nah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, at the end of round four, the scores are Devo and Kells with 85, Andy with 90. Ooh. It's anybody's game. Yes, it is. Category five is sports. Sport ball. Mm -hmm. Question one, what is the traditional name for a hockey jersey? Ogden. This is one of those I'm going to know it as soon as somebody says it. Hockey. It's not jersey. Yeah, um, I threw that one out. Um, I got nothing. I'm locked in. I'm locked in. Kels? I just had a uni. <laughs> Handy? Windbreaker. <laughs> Deva? Sweater. Oh. Sweater. oh. Because they used to be sweaters. <laughs> yeah, because it was cold. <laughs> put that, well, I got to put that sweater on. <laughs> Uh, I think I think some people still call them a sweater today. Yeah, even sure though did. they're made of whatever high tech polyester they are now. Question two: What was the name of the controversial line of competition swimsuits used by many swimmers in the 2008 Olympics? Oh man! Mm. I'll give you partial credit if so. I'm looking for the actual um, the actual line of those swimsuits, but I'll accept the manufacturer of them as well. Like the, the company. Uh, I'll accept that for half points. I mean, okay. I'm locked in. I'm locked in. I think I know this. I'm locked in. Andy. It's the LZR full body. What in the world? Right. Deva? Cause <laughs> they were, they, cause they were made illegal. Yeah. They, yeah. Deva? Uh, I, I thought Speedo was the company that manufactured them. I didn't remember the full body LZR thing. The Kels. Underoos. <laughs> <laughs> well, Speedo was the manufacturer of the LZR racers. Oh. So full, full points to Andy for the LZR. Good get Andy. Um, Thank you. Nice. So I have no Andy. idea why that was buried in my brain somewhere. 90 it was it was pronounced laser they didn't say lzr okay they're, they're laser racers but n during that olympics the 2008 olympics 98 percent of the swimming medals wore those swimsuits and they broke 23 world records was yeah that, yeah they've that the one they've since been broke all those records yeah then beijing yeah yeah that seemed yeah. a little shady. <laughs> they've since been banned but they didn't, they were actually kind of clever the way they banned it. They didn't ban any particular material. They banned swimsuits that basically go beneath the knee or um, around uh, around the, the, like past the shoulders. Oh. 
because the the benefit was the stiff i think the stiffness or elasticity that it gives your legs and arms mm-hmm. i think something well, it like was that. extremely low drag too that was the other issue was that it yeah it it, it completely it, it, yeah <laughs> so so they didn't uh, they didn't ban that material they just put more restrictions on the design of the swimsuits mm-hmm. good job andy question yeah. three Michael Jordan helped to popularize long baggy shorts in the NBA. Why did he prefer longer shorts? I've got oh, two answers that I'm are acceptable. I've never even of... thought about this. Um, I have a theory. I have a theory as well. I'm locking in. And I am locked in. All right, Kels. I'm guessing because he liked to, he wore his uh unc shorts underneath so maybe he needed longer shorts in order for them not to come well be seen under his um bulls uniform okay andy first off that's crazy uh, you know, <laughs> as an athlete i mean i get the i get that the, you know the, you get kind of um what's what i'm looking for the you don't want to break the mojo and superstitious yeah. but at the same time i'd be like I want to make sure I'm the most comfortable out there in the court. So I have nothing distracting me. (laughs) Um, I went the other way. I thought that maybe the baggy shorts allowed him to more easily fake a move. Like go, you know, it'd be harder to tell which way he was going by looking at his legs. Like Toro. Yeah. (laughs) A little bit. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. A little bit. A little bit. David. I had the exact same answer as Kelvin. Uh, he wears UNC shorts underneath, and you can't have that showing under from you, that would be out of dress. That'd be a violation of the NBA dress code. So you need yeah. longer shorts to cover it. So one of the acceptable answers, I didn't really find any confirmation, but you remember how he used to hang on to his shorts when he bent over? Mm-hmm. People, people were one one speculation is that they were easier. Like he could hang on to them while he was bending over resting. But the more common answer is because he wore his Tar Heels practice shorts underneath them. And is that absolutely proved or is that just speculation? No. Um, I mean, he He's did do it. that. Okay. Yeah, I, I think it's. Did you know that, Kels, or did you guess? You sounded like you were guessing. No, I knew that. I knew he wore his. Um, I didn't know that that's why he wore longer shorts. I just thought because he didn't want his shorts all up on him like that. But I didn't know I they were his practice. Be. So I thought there was his UNC game shorts. I would have presumed his game shorts. I saw different responses for that. Mm-hmm. So I don't, I don't know. But it was his UNC shorts. Yeah. Question four. The Eternity Bracelet became known as a tennis bracelet in 1978 when what player lost her bracelet during a U.S. Open match and play was stopped so that she could locate it? She went on to win her fourth consecutive U.S. Open title. What year? 1978. I'm locked in. I'm locked in. Um, yeah. Nothing. Yeah, I'll stick. Mm. All right. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm going with the only one that I can think of of the 70s. I hope, I'm hoping she's 70s. There's, there's two big ones that I, I was thinking you guys might say, but we'll see. Devo? Well, it's the two I was thinking of was Martina Navratilova, and the one that I wrote down was Chris Everett. Oh, Kels. I didn't even think of Chris Everett. Um, I said Martina Navratilova. Andy? I went with Billie Jean King. Ooh. Mm. Another good one. Yeah, so so if you don't know, which I didn't really know, the tennis bracelet is is a bracelet. I thought it had a lot of bangles and stuff, but apparently it's just it's just a bunch of gems. And I think hers was uh, like a diamond bracelet. Mm. And she basically said, "I dropped my tennis bracelet, meaning the bracelet that she wears when she plays tennis." But apparently, that picked up uh, the in kind of the zeitgeist, and people started calling them tennis mm. bracelets after that huh. because they were convenient to wear if you want to look nice while you're playing tennis i guess Hmm. and the person that we're talking about is chris evert oh nice table thank you uh 
David, I'll give you a break on the name. It's Evert, E V E R T, not Everett. I wrote down no. Evert. I just said okay. Everett. I'm sorry. But yeah, I think she, uh, I, I know Martina Nevertolova was playing in that tournament, but she made it to the semifinals. And I forget who Chris Everett won't beat. But anyway, at the end of round five, Kells is 95, Andy 100, and Devo 120. Whoa. Okay. Jumped up. Yeah. All right. Our last category is definitions. Oh. I'm going to describe something, and you just have to tell me what its name is. Okay. So question one, a dress with a narrow top and flared towards the hem. Uh, lock. Oh, wait a minute. No, that's a house. Um... <laughs> that's a house? <laughs> Kind of... um... <laughs> no, it's. I'm I'm locked in with my I'm with my fur. I'm just gonna lock in with what I came up with right away. And believe it, I'm not I'm not really familiar with the names of dresses. No, mm-hmm. this is not gonna be your category then. <laughs> <laughs> I got hung up on what you know. You, you get hung up on that initial answer, and it's hard to shake. As, uh, I can see. I know uh-huh. what you're talking about. I can see. I'm just gonna write down what I have. Okay, I am locked in. Okay, um, I'm gonna lock in. All right, Andy. Um, I went with cocktail dress. Mm. Diva. <laughs> what was that cry? Well, that's a good. That's a good answer. It was that grunt. That was an acknowledgement of good answer because my answer sucks. It's poodle skirt is what I put. Okay, yeah, that does suck, Kels. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow, you're cruel. You're just cruel. Oh, uh, okay. So, good answer. Original <laughs> Well, that said, that was the kind of house I was thinking A frame. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I knew it was A something. So I said A line. It's an A line. The correct answer is an A line. Yeah. I could see Christina Hendricks wearing that in Mad Men. It kind of flares out a little probably bit. Probably could have, yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Question two A rich fabric woven with a raised pattern, typically with gold or silver thread, but not necessarily. What? Um, Not literally gold or silver, but gold or silver colored thread. I have no idea. I don't know what it's called. No, I, I feel like I see it in my head. I once knew this, but I I don't. I think the extent of my knowledge of this is, ooh, that's purdy. <laughs> <laughs> Looks good on you. Yeah, I'm locked in. I'm locked in. Yeah, it doesn't matter anymore. All right, sure. Locked in. That's what I like to hear. (laughs) I'm going to say poodle skirt until I'm right. (laughs) I said bedazzling. Andy. Royale. (laughs) The correct answer is brocade. Oh. Yeah, still don't know. Question three. A dress that has a fitted bodice ending just below the bust, giving a high-waisted appearance, and a gathered skirt, which is loose and long, uh, long and loosely fitting. I am locked in. (laughs) I thought Devo was going to be the one that knows dresses. No judgments. This is a judgment-free zone. It's just like Planet Fitness. Oh, what is? I do know what this is. This is, uh, yes. Is it something that Donna Reed might have worn? <laughs> I don't know. Okay. I don't think so. All right, I'm locked in. I don't think she would have worn it on the Donna Reed show. Mm. But possibly at an award show or something, maybe. Oh, gotcha. crap, and mine's dead wrong. Yeah, I'm fine. Probably... <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not something you're going to wear at a award at a, at a, at a show. I don't even want to give my answer now. <laughs> Judgment free, Andy. Oh, you say that now. Kells, what's your answer? 
I said poodle skirt. Yeah. Maybe. Peasant dress. Devo. I also said peasant dress. The correct answer is an empire. Oh, mm. sure. Empire. Can't believe I didn't know that. Oh, wait. <laughs> yes, I can believe that. Can absolutely believe I didn't know that. I feel like I want to graph this this uh, game because it's definitely it's definitely going to be a bell curve. <laughs> Categories three and four, you guys are pretty good at. One mm. and five, one one and six, not so much. Yeah. Question four: A slim fitting skirt with a narrow straight cut, usually knee length and often with a vent in the back. Locked in. Andy, a, a vent is another name for a for a slit. I'm locked in. Okay. It doesn't matter what event or slit means. <laughs> I'm locked in. All right, Andy, what's your answer? Cocktail dress. Devo. A pencil skirt. Ooh. Ooh. A cocktail dress. Correct answer is a pencil skirt. Devo. Look at the big brain on Devo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so our final scores before the final question is Andy with 100, Kells 105, and Devo a commanding 130. Commanding. Oh, crap. I'm going to be the new Devo. So what you're saying is we all got like 10 points in that last round? Uh, no, because Andy got no points. Oh. Mm. Thanks, sir. Sorry, Andy. I didn't know. There. Hey, I was I was just answering the question. <laughs> I, no, it's all right. No, it's all right. I get it. So I found a website that looked at the most valuable apparel brands as of February 2019. Mm. And I've got a list of them here. And I will give you 10 points for any of the top 15 brands that you can name. And just, just to be clear, apparel in this case includes clothes, jewelry, footwear, and accessories. Oh, okay. 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 I can do this. I can do all right with this. Uh, wait just one second, Bobble. Yes, it's your friendly podcasting fanatic. Here to shout out my trivia brothers from another mother, the Trivia Rogues. When you get a chance, pop on over to the Trivia Rogues and let Billy and the gang educate you on some things, Bobble. Funk on. And do remember to please look both ways before you cross my mind, baby. So you're just looking at the clothes I'm wearing. Dickies. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. I just need one more. To I need up. three more. I have like a closet full of stuff and I can't think of one brand. Try to think who makes my farm and fleet bib overalls. <laughs> That'll be up there. I'm locked in. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. I'm just. I have my ten. Done. So done. You you be all right. Okay. Here, <laughs> I'm the new Devo. Just something I'm gonna have to learn to accept and and you know rise above. I kind of resent that's become a uh, a thing. <laughs> well. <laughs> It's been a long running thing. I mean, you know, eventually the Red Sox World Series, man. And, you know, that's what it is. And I am I am now the Houston Astros. What do you mean? No, I didn't cheat. Wait. No, I'm, I'm, I am. Didn't the Houston Astros, I mean, they were at least first or second, right? Yeah, but they cheated. They're the most hated team. Oh, in baseball oh I, now. I see what you're saying. Yeah. So, Andy, you more like the Braves in the 90s. So you 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 won one, but you've been a lot. And yeah, you're right. I figured he'd be more more like the Cubs. Hey, Cubs are Cubs is legit right now. Uh, we we managed I mean, to win right one now, World yeah. Series, <laughs> yeah. And it's forever, right yeah. Like I mean, Cubs I, for most of their most like of the their Cubs. Life. I will find a way to lose. <laughs> There's a way. I will find it. So, so by the way, the the uh, website is called. Um, brand finance they mm -hmm. actually have a formula that they use to calculate this brand value so 
it's not strictly based on the revenue. So that's, that's why I gave you a little bit wider range than just the top 10. So uh, right, we'll just see how it goes. Andy, what are your answers? Uh, number one's got to be Nike. Uh, Adidas, Levi, uh, Levi's, uh, The Gap, mm-hmm. Ralph Lauren, Victoria's Secret, Ray-Ban, Ooh, Under one. Armour, and I really just blanked. Um, I went with Armani just because Cal said it earlier, and Cal's is almost <laughs> always right. And uh, I started writing down Prada, as in the devil were Prada, but then I remembered North Face, and I went with North Face. Nice. Okay, that seems like a solid list. I'm not happy with that at all. Okay, well, I can just delete I it think, if you want. No, no, no. But I think I think That's I got good. six. I'm good guessing list. five or six in this list are accurate. Okay, Kels. All right. Uh, I got a lot of what Andy got. Uh, Nike, uh, Ralph Lauren, Adidas, Converse, <laughs> <laughs> the Converse, uh, Victoria's Secret. Levi's, Old Navy, oh. North Bay, Calvin Klein, and Jordan. Jordan. Hey, what? As in the Jordan brand. You think? I mean, yeah, shoes. Maybe. Maybe He's got his own brand. It's. I, I was a little on the fence. I didn't know if it was still like considered like if they would count that with the Nike stats or if it would be its own stat. So I just went out on a limb and said Jordan by itself. Okay. David? I said Chanel, um, mm-hmm. Armani, Vera Wang, Jimmy Chu, uh, Louis Vuitton. Wow. Ralph yeah. Lauren, uh, Tommy Hilfiger. Versace, uh, Tiffany, and Nike. Devo clearly just looked in his closet. (laughs) (laughs) Just kind of rattled off. Here, what can I see for him sitting here? It's laundry day, you know. Yeah, because I'm I'm I have all sorts of Versaces hanging up in my closet. (laughs) You look like the rock and attitude. (laughs) This is actually this is kind of a. A fascinating because you went with a different strategy altogether. So either Kels and I are dead wrong, or you're dead wrong. Uh, the odds are probably you went favorite. with the most expensive brands, which I, the, I there's there's value to that to be sure. You don't have to sell as much to make as much, and and those brands have are, are probably more valuable because of their name. So I'll be curious to see how this plays out. Man, I hadn't thought of Jimmy Choo. Jimmy Choo in a minute. Well, the, he mentioned footwear, and it's like, what are the the high high dollar footwear? It's like, oh, Jimmy Choo's and Louboutin. All right. Yeah. So you got Louboutin. Did, did you say Louis Vuitton too? No, I just said Louboutin. I didn't say Louis Vuitton. Oh, okay. I I I heard Louis Vuitton. I did not say Louis Vuitton. I said Louboutin. You said okay. Louis Vuitton, Dave. I'll stick with Louis Vuitton. <clears throat> I'm not a part of I will win honestly. The red bottoms. Mm-hmm. So let's uh, get some notable mentions here on this list. Let's see. Polo, Ralph Lauren was 19th. So those don't count. Um, Ray Band, 20. Armani, 23. Under Armour is 25, uh, Old Navy 26, Calvin Klein 28, Levi's 29th. You killed my whole list. Um, I'm just looking like Dave Tommy, all the way. Tommy Hilfiger is 32, Gap 33, um, Hugo Boss is 37. That was called that. Ooh, never thought of that. Converse, mm. someone said Converse. That's down at uh, 46. Oh, I got so many pairs. So let's start with 15 and work our way up. Okay. Oh, did someone say someone was gonna say Prada, right? I was. Um, I had Prada. I wrote it, crossed off for North Face. Well, oh, North Face was seventeen. Prada was sixteen. <laughs> <laughs> In the ballpark <laughs> with those two, could, could have gone either way. Oh, that leaves me a three. You haven't killed it's, off yet. Uh, well, yep, that's about right. Four. Uh, number fifteen, Burberry. Oh. oh. 14 Tiffany. David picked up that one. 
Christian Dior. Uh, um, a couple of you said Victoria's Secret was 12. Got that. Coach, 11. Oh, I thought a coach. Number 10 is Rolex. Nine, Gucci. Hmm. Eight, Hermes. Seven is a Japanese company called Uniqlo. U-N-I-Q-L-O. Not familiar. Devo, number six, is Louis Vuitton. Dang it. Mm. Uh, five is Cartier. Four is H&M. I don't know what that is. Don't know. Uh, three, Adidas. Yes. <laughs> Two, Zara. Don't know. And number is. one is Nike. Uh, I, did. Oh. I got three. I got so three. by my count, Andy got three for 30 points and a total of 130. Tied. Which makes you tied at this moment with Devo. Kells also got 30 uh, for a total of 135. Devo only got two, but that's enough to bring him up to 150 and the win. Well <laughs> done, Devo. Yeah. On my list, the two that I got were number nine and number 10. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it doesn't matter how you got there. That was oh, hard man. fought, Devo. I tip my hat to you, and yes, I sir. will take the keys from the basement from you. And Joe will be residing for, for a that. while now. Get some <laughs> ILF, a bean bag, and some Fritos. It's pretty nice. Thank down there. you. What, what is what is that smell? Chili cheese Fritos. Oh yeah. Mm. All right. I want to get comfortable in my bean bag. I'm done. <laughs> yeah. So the final standings are Andy earned fifteen or fourteen points total in the tournament. Devo earned sixteen, and Kells won eighteen. Nice. Well, congratulations, Kells, on your being the man of steel. You good, sir? Good game, everybody. Um, our next show, we will have, it will be our, I think, it will be our 100th show. Correct, Neil? Ooh. Uh, boy, I don't know. Will there be cake? That's a really good question. I'm glad you asked that and sprung it on me without... Uh... <laughs> I've been doing the math. I've been keeping up. It will it <laughs> will be our 100th show, and wow. with our 100th show, we're going to make some changes, some exciting changes to the to the podcast that I think you all will enjoy. So, from everybody, it's been here, nice. It's been nice playing with you. <laughs> bye, Neil. <laughs> I presume they were firing me. Hey, I feel like this would be a good time that to to tell people if they were patrons, they would already know what our changes are. You know, I'm you're sure right. The patrons are. It's up. If you are a patron of the wonderful Brain Ladle Trivia Podcast, you know what those changes are going to be. If you're not a patron, you're just going to have to wait and find out. So if you want the inside info, sign up to our Patreon. Any level of, of commitment will get you those bonus episodes where we have been introducing the big new secret. So from all of us here... At the Brain Ladle Trivia Podcast, this is Davo, who no longer lives in the basement, with Kells. You know, I'm starting to understand that maybe you don't like the prestige. (laughs) You don't like the notoriety. You detest the fact that I got more cars than most of you have friends. I got a big house on the big side of town. I got life. Exactly the way I want it. <laughs> Do you think the wind's gone to his head? <laughs> so long from the basement, ladle brainers. And Neil. Mark, Tw- Mark Twain said, clothes make the man. Naked people have little or no influence on society. <laughs> <laughs> Signing off. Uh, greetings and salutations to all you good trivia people out there. I know what you're thinking. Hey, I really enjoyed this show. Uh, how can I get a little more? Well, here to help you out. You can look up these good people on Twitter at Little Brain. Or if Facebook's more your deal, you can look them up at Brain Little Productions. Hey, they've even got their own webpage. It's uh, Brain Little Trivia 
www.patreon.com. Uh, now, if you're feeling generous, you can join a Patreon, where if you donate $10 or more, you can even get yourself a fancy show invite. Now, how about that? Until we meet again, this has been 44, and I'm glad you joined us. Hope I'm out. The preceding podcast was presented by Brain Ladle Productions. All rights reserved.